because it's the first time I'm giving this. Eh? <laughs> that is, I just jotted down these notes five minutes ago. <laughs> so the title of this talk is Thinking Out of the Box When DDD is Not Enough. And I was a little bit afraid that Mr. West uh, was going to take everything that I was going to say and point out, to it, point out that uh, that was a problem, but luckily I still have some things left. So I will start out with some examples. Um, I've been a consultant for quite a few years, and I had a lot of problems that people came to me, and I said, oh, DDD is great and DDD is wonderful. But at a certain point in time, somebody came to me and said, uh, do you still have a problem that needs to be solved? So the guy came to me and said, yeah, we have a problem where there's a web UI that needs to access a shared folder and it uses federation over federation over federation to kind of pulse the access rights or through the web servers, et cetera, et cetera. I said, okay, give me a minute, I will take a look. And after half an hour, I came back to him and said, it will take me an hour to fix it. He said, that's impossible. They have been looking for three weeks how to solve the federation issue. And I said, okay, just give me an hour and I will do the commit and then we'll see. So after an hour, I came back to the guy and I said, look what I did. I just replaced the whole thing. So they built an in-browser an in browser for, for the file folders, yeah? the, an explorer basically within the browser. I just replaced it with an upload button because everybody had the same file share that the people were using to upload the file. So that's when I, when I, what I say when I say, when I, when I mean you, you need to talk out, of, to think out of the box and yeah? because People tend to think in technical solutions and are stuck within this certain paradigm of we need to fix it by technology. I have another example. Uh, at a certain point in time, I was working for a big company that did a lot of printing. And every single month, there would be three people in the printing room sorting out papers. I said, give me one week and I'll fix it. So as, as I jotted down again, I started fixing it. And they had like this system of bad jobs that they developed in-house. I just started every print job paused, so we can start pinch on posts, and then when all of the batch jobs were finished, I just uh, released that, uh, that notion of batch, batches. So it's about thinking about the process, what you're really trying to achieve with the business, not just trying to figure out technical solutions. One last one, uh, at a certain point in time, we were in uh, some kind of a consortium, and we had the problem there that there was one, one guy leading, and he had, was the Unix administrator, and he was doing all kinds of stuff and they said, yeah, we cannot replace him, so we will need to educate everybody on Unix and, and it will take time and cost money, etc., etc." So I said, just give me a minute, let's sit down. What was he doing actually? And the guy was running scripts, basically scripts, checking data, ETL, things like that. So I said, okay, once again, give me a week. <laughs> and I wrote a really simple UI with a plugin system. Uh, that had a telnet window that would lively connect and, and show the data and make a connection to the server because it all was all within the network, within the, the internal network, within the LAN. And all I did was make a simple UI with a plugin system that would allow you to set some parameters for the scripts. And all of a sudden, they started making way more scripts and everybody could use it, so it was really simple. It was really so that's what I mean when you need to think out of the box. You need to think why you are doing things for the people you are doing. And that's why I come to DDD, when DDD is not enough. The problem is with DDD, uh, and this is based on the discussions that I had today as well about politics involved and, and not always being able to do what you want to do. The thing is that DDD is working in a local maxima. So you're usually, you're building your own perfect world, but it's usually from the side of IT. You get some business involvement, but you don't get the opportunity to actually change the business. And that's a big problem because you're trying to build a perfect model of a business that is not perfectly modeled. So um, I would like to give an, an, an example of that. Uh, it's not related to development, but it's related to an agile transformation. So I don't know if you know it, but agile transformation typically, typically works in three ways. Eh? First they say, yeah, we want to be agile. And they put up some scrum boards and, and whatever they want to, and then they start using those methodologies half-assed and nobody follows it up. That's the first wave. Then you have the second wave where they get the methodology fully in place. So you get full safe trains, everything you need. Eh? But still, the company itself is not working agile. And then in the third wave, they finally start realizing, okay, this is what we need. So I was in a, in a second wave with the company and said, okay, we need to put people. So we had the architects in one room and then we had the 
the people who would uh, do the user requirements in one room, and then we had the other people, so really not cross-functional at all. Eh? And then the development team, test teams, etc., etc. So I, you, I said we need one big office to put all the people together, for starters. And then of course we would split again with on a functional living. So um, when I said that, I was getting a lot of resistance, and I didn't find out why. It took me about a month to really figure out because it was a highly political organization. So I found out that people, as they were maturing and they got to a higher level, higher pay grade, they got a smaller office with, with less people in it. So I was actually trying to say, okay, let's put everybody in one room. And they were like, no, we spent 20 years working here trying to get a single office with the... So that's what I was, was trying to refer to when you say, uh, okay, you need to... Uh, take into account Chesterton's fence. A fence that is there, nobody wants to remove it because you don't know why it's there, but you need to figure out truly the root cause. Yeah? That's always in, in, in also in domain-driven design. When people ask you a question, try to figure out what's behind it. I have another example. Um, at a certain point of time, I had a customer of my customer coming to visit. He said, I need 99.99 availability. I was like, yeah, are you sure? Yeah, the client has 99.99, so you need to go hybrid cloud because most cloud uh, platforms don't offer two nines, so uh, the whole thing. And then I got back, I said, can you give me five minutes with the client, just one question? No, no, it's not possible, he was very explicit. But in the end, I got the client online, I said, look, I heard you want 99.99, are you willing to accept 99.95? Because that would uh, take one-tenth of the price to set it up, because you don't need multi-cloud, you don't need all the syncing going on, etc." That, oh, okay, yeah, let's do that then. So it's basically about finding out why you are doing things and what, what you are doing. So there's also uh, something called uh, Hanlon's Razor. I don't know if any, anybody knows it. There's something called Occam's Razor. People know that. It's usually the most simple solution. Yet. And Hanlon's Razor is never attribute to malice that which can be adequately explained by stupidity. And <laughs> That's easy to say when you come into a system, oh, it's legacy, oh, oh, those people were really stupid. Everything happens for a reason. People make decisions based on assumptions. It's not that they're wrongly or they, it, it was there for a reason. So you need to take into account the reason that things happen. There's always a history behind it. So you might think, hey, I'm smart. Those guys didn't know what they were doing. No, they, were, they knew perfectly what they were doing, and perfectly what they were doing within their time, within their time frame with the information available to them at a certain time. Which also brings me to the next point, all the decisions that you make are based on the information that you have available at this time. So if I would like to conclude all of that, I would like to say, okay, make sure that when you do DDD, don't just focus on what you're doing right now, but take into account the history of the company you're working with, the business you're working with, and even like Mr. David West said, I really think that development on long term will be something, a uh, capability that everybody should have, like doing Excel or doing PowerPoint or whatever. And there will be certain niches that will still exist, of course, but it should be more accessible to everybody. So that's it. It was uh, five minutes preparation. I don't know how long I took. <laughs> Ten minutes, okay. So I think that's it. I don't know what you think about it. So just give me maybe thumbs, Roman, or... Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you.